Hey everyone, welcome back to the Shintaro Higashi Show with Peter Yu. Today we're going to talk about the mental side of judo, something you don't really see, right? The physical side, everybody sees. You got a great set of abs that are sticking <laughs> through your gi, like people are going to see that. You have a great uchimana, people are going to see that. But there's this underlying mentality, right, that you, right. is not very visible. So yeah. that's what we want to talk a little bit about today. One of the listeners kind of suggested this and, you know, we're going to take it away. Right. So we've, been, we've talked a lot about the physical side of judo, you know, the yep. techniques and the strategies and then the training yeah. and the diet and on that. that so, diet, yeah. but Very we're going to see, yeah, how judo, you know, affects, benefits you mentally and then what kind of mentality is required to be good at judo in a way. Yeah. So personally, I think the biggest benefit I got mentally speaking mm -hmm. uh, from judo is confidence. Confidence, so, yeah. Yeah, so because, you know, I think the physical training aspect, like the fact that I can like defend myself in a way, yeah. uh, uh, get, gave me a lot of uh, confidence in day-to-day yep. -day life. So yeah. any, anything, what do you think about that aspect, the confidence boost side? Well, you know, so this is the thing, like when you go into a dojo, right? And then you right. are learning how to break fall for the first time. The person who's mm -hmm. listening who's already done judo is going to be like, yeah, it's not a big deal. But if you right. sat on your couch and you have back issues and you're kind of mm -hmm. out of shape or whatever it is, and then you're about to take a big break fall and you're right. trusting this person, you don't know how mm -hmm. th hard this person is going to throw you. All right. you see are these YouTube highlights, right? right? So you have to like trust this person and mm. all these little flags are going off like this kind's kind of a dick i don't really trust him you know this guy <laughs> seems really nice maybe i trust him this guy's big therefore he may hurt me you know which is kind of like a flawed reasoning thing but i mean right. people have that kind of a thing right right and then okay so uh, i don't know I, I got paired up with this person and this person wants to throw me he showed me breakfall now we have to do it on the crash mat oh it's so scary it's so scary right so now it's like overcoming that fear mm-hmm because right? if you can't overcome that fear and then you resist, right, you could potentially get hurt. Right. If you try to step out of it, now you're not being a good partner and you could twist your knee, land on your shoulder, right? I think so that's... Like you have to overcome that fear. Right. First and foremost. And you have to trust them. So like mm -hmm. that's like some of the mental side. And once you're capable of doing that, right, then you start become confident. building confident. Because like, yeah. oh, I could take a fall. Right. And that's like step one of like, oh, man, I could get taken down on this crash mat in a cooperative setting. I could get back up and I'm good. And then you start trusting yourself to like say, okay, I trust this person. I trust that person. Now you're building confidence in your ability to select the people who are going to keep you safe. Right. Right. So it's, so it's I think like that's the first step. Right. So in the, so it's almost like the physical side of things are, it's like a, a virtual cycle where the physical side of things, you know, being outside of your physical comfort zone yeah. pushes you to you know, face your fear and then by overcoming it, you become more confident and then you, yeah. you know, yeah. become more ingrained into the community, like trust, uh, start trusting more people. Trusting more people. That, now you're going yeah. live, right? And then you're right. like, okay, these techniques, you know, a lot of martial arts, like these techniques work, these techniques work, try it, try it, try it. And right. you're doing it all in a cooperative setting. You never get to try it on someone that's actually actively resisting. Right, right. So now all of a sudden you're trying it on someone that's actively resisting. You right. do judo for six months, you're there for six months, now you're a yellow belt or a white belt with whatever stripe or whatever system you're in, and now somebody brand new comes along and that person's big, that person's strong, that person's scary, but you could take that person down or you could choke mm -hmm. that person. Now that builds a little bit more confidence, <laughs> right? Because before, six right. months ago, you would have saw that person and said, I can't beat that guy. Right. So uh, the, again, you know, right? So, so that's like, uh, you know, for a lot of, for a lot of people who started as an adult, you know, you could kind of see the progression right there and, Definitely. and there. Even kids. Um, yeah. yeah. So like I was going to ask, like personally speaking for yeah. your, ex from your experience, but because you, you've done judo all your life. So mm. did you see that happening? Because like your life was so like, in, you know, your judo was such a big part of your life the whole time. So yeah, did, definitely. Did you I, see I that transition? Built yeah. a lot of confidence through judo, right? If I didn't have mm -hmm. judo, I'd, uh, I mean, what, what else would I have done? You know, would I have tried to gain the same type of confidence? You know, if I was a golfer or something, it's like, right. yeah, I could hit the golf ball and like walk around a strut. But it's about value systems too. You know, some people right. need to feel like, oh man, I'm in control. Like I can defend myself. Some mm -hmm. people need that. And I know people who don't care about that at all. Right, right. Not at all. Like they're like, ah, I'm happy, you know, do my software engineering job and ah. just be that shape, and I've never lifted a weight in my life. I'm physically weak. Uh, I don't care. Yeah, and I know people like that too. Right, right. 
you know, uh, and I have my opinions about that. It's like, um, <laughs> why? You should work out. You know, you should yeah. always work out. I'm a big fan of this. And, you know, it's good for your, you know, mindset and, you know, mental health. But anyway, that's completely besides the point. Uh, yeah, I definitely felt little by little more and more confident. And then, you know, when you're growing up and you're in middle school mm-hmm. and then, you know, you have an encounter. I remember like this kid punted the ball and the ball like nailed my friend in the face and they got mm. exchanging words. And then my friend got scared. And then I don't know. I, 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 there was no need for me to get involved, but I got involved. And I, like, right. uh, you know, tried like, to defend your friend. Yeah, yeah. And then he shoved me and then he tried to tackle me. And uh-huh. then I put him in a front headlock, need him, and then like dumped him. Oh, you know, and, I, and then I was a hero for a day. Right, you know, like, right. And I'm, I'm not advocating for that, but like that made me feel like, oh, oh, I, I have a skill that can be useful in the real world. And I made right. that connection for the first time when I was like 11, 12. Because you know something I did that like my school, mm-hmm. like none of my friends did, because my dojo was in Manhattan in the city, and then my school was in Westchester in the suburbs, like right, three right. minutes away. So none of my school friends went to judo, right? Right, it's right. Just something that I did, and then it was always like, oh, Shintaro does judo, Shintaro does judo. And that was like my first extra application and like confidence boost. Yeah, it was a big confidence boost. And then it's like now all of a sudden I'm wrestling and then, you know, you go to a party or something and someone tries to put you in a headlock and then you you pick them up and, you know, put them down. And (laughs) and all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm not scared of physical confrontation. And I think... Of course, a lot of it is false confidence because I could have easily gotten hit in the face with a lucky punch or whatever it was. But the ability to feel like I could walk into a party and no one can kick my ass here, you know, which is completely not true, right? Because mm. you, you're, you're drinking right. and there's a lot of people and three people and, you know, you get hit in the back of that. You, it's completely untrue, right? Right. But just the fact that, like, at that age, I didn't know any better. And I was like, yeah, no one could take me down. Yeah. And you walk into a room and it's just like it feels good, you know? So, right. like, that feeds on itself. It's like a feedback loop. Right Mm -hmm. now, all of a sudden, everyone's like, "Okay, all right, this guy, you know, uh, whatever." You know what I I mean? Yeah, I think it's not about like, "Oh, you 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 know how to defend yourself, and you you're gonna go around and start fights everywhere with everyone." It's not. It's not even that. It's more like because you know how to you you, you're confident that you can defend yourself in in those physical altercations. You are more. You become more calm in a way. Like you're like. You're more relaxed. Yeah. yeah, you're not on the edge. You know, you yeah. can in, enjoy the moment better. I think that's that, true. That's on <laughs> one aspect about being confident through judo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you know, little by little, right? You start making these like risk calculuses in your head. The older right. you get, the more you do judo, the more you're aware of what people are physically capable of. Right. And you have no clue by looking at someone how good they are at at whatever they do. You just right, don't right. know. So now all of a sudden you develop sort of this humbleness, this respect, like, you know, this guy's kind of talking shit, you know, whatever it is, and, ah, just let it go, because, you know, and then you're going to be it's okay with it. It's not worth it, yeah. Yeah, so that, like, kind of definitely helps, right, mm-hmm. add to sort of the confidence. Mm-hmm, yeah. Right, and then, you know, also, like, when you're doing judo, uh, the best part about it is, like, you're kind of going live every day, like, you're actually mm-hmm. doing full throttle, full resistance. Right. Your will versus their will, like, it's a full throttle sport. Right. Mm -hmm. So once you're doing that on a daily basis, like you don't shy away from that at all. Right. Yeah. And then now all of a sudden you're doing something that most people don't do. Mm -hmm. Right. So now you're like, okay, now you build confidence through that. It's like not everyone can do this. Right. Even though sometimes (laughs) I say everyone can do this. (laughs) Yeah. It's like sprinting. Right. It's like when you're older, you don't sprint anymore. When was the last time you ran as fast as you possibly can until you just couldn't run anymore? Kids do it every day. Yeah, I don't even remember now. Yeah, I, so that you I just got to do it. Should do that more now. <laughs> when you do something yeah. like that, right? And yeah. then now all of a sudden you're like, okay, someone's trying to mug you, and you know they're chasing you down the street. Can I outrun <laughs> that person in a sprint? Probably can if you've been doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I do it, but I, it's, I can't run that long anyway. But still, <laughs> like you just kind of know where you are, right? Right. And then you know, overcoming that initial lung burn, mm. pushing through those limits, and Right, all those things translates over to like, you know what? I am doing the best I can in this body. I'm developing the skill. I'm working really hard, and not I'm better than everybody, but mm-hmm. like you do develop a, a a certain confidence. I think. Right. Yeah. It's almost like we talked about this, like the level of knowledge. Um, you know, like what is it? The first is like you don't even know what you don't know, 
Yeah, you don't know what you don't know. That's no, like one then, of my biggest things that I always re- try to repeat right. myself. And then as you go through this journey, if as, as you find out more about your physical limits and then pushing through it, you know, you're more aware about your limits and then what you can do to improve upon. And then, yeah. you know, and then uh, that, that builds your confidence. And then now you kind of talked about overcoming yeah. adversities. Like, you know, judo training can be, uh, you know, very gruesome, like very yeah. h- tough. Um, it's like you say, it's a, it's very different from others, other mm. popular sports in a way. Yeah. The grappling. Yeah. yeah. That's the most obvious example. Yeah. You know, here's another one. Um, when you're doing judo randori all the time, right? right. You should develop certain habits. Mm-hmm. Uh, this technique is very high, you know, success rate for me. Mm-hmm. I'm a big, strong person. From you know, I'm not that big, but it's like you know, I'm two ten. 210 yeah. pounds, right? Uh, you know, not very tall, but <laughs> 210 <laughs> pounds. So I'm heavier than the majority of the people in the room. You right. Know, you put me on a, a distribution curve, I'm, I'm sort of at the top end, uh-huh. right? Um, you know, considering like uh, average weight is, you know, right, X right. pounds or whatever it is. So now all of a sudden, you know, there's things that's going to work for me a little bit better than the average human body or the things that I kind of force through using mm-hmm. my physical attributes that kind of like can overcompensate for lack of sort of technique or timing or whatever it is, mm-hmm. right? So now all of a sudden I have that. And let's just say that's a Sotogari. Mm-hmm. Let's just say I was a lot taller too, right? Let's just say <laughs> I go over the back, I can stick my leg out and throw a Sotogari. Now that's a high success rate for me. Right. If I go back to the room every day and just do that because I know it works, just do that because I know it works and throwing everyone, throwing everyone, throwing them out, I might really get better. You know what I mean? Not really. You're not really going outside of a comfort zone. I'm just yeah. waiting for people to get better at defending that so I can right. get a little tiny bit better. Defend that. A little tiny mm. bit better. So now I'm like looking at like little micro adjustments. And like, That's good. But like I need a complimentary throw. Maybe society, right? Maybe right. Uche, I go inside, outside, something like this. Snap down a so I got to work all the different uh, sort of entries. But right. if I'm big enough to just stick a leg out, hook it and go, I don't have to work on any of those entries. Right, right. Right. So I'm like sort of creating a barrier for myself mentally. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's a mentality because... As opposed to being introspective and saying, hey, I need to work on these things. Why is this technique working for me? Why do I keep relying on this technique? You just mm-hmm. going back, keep doing it. You're throwing people and you're like, I won, I won, I won. Right? That's another type of mentality that inhibits growth. It's right. inhibiting your growth. Right? So you have to kind of take a step back, look at it yourself and saying, okay, what? why is this working? What is working? How is it working? How can I make it better? Right. Mm-hmm. And that's another sort of type of mentality that's very, very important. People who do this get better faster. People who don't do this and rely on one thing, you see those one trick ponies. Right, right. Right. In the dojo, that guy does drop Sanagi. He throws a lot of people with it, but that's all he does. That's all he's got. That's all he does. Can you defend it? Yes. Okay. He'll never throw you ever again. Can you defend it? No. He'll always forever throw you forever and ever. How was that, dude? It's a little I bit. Feel- I got called out just now. <laughs> yeah, but, no, you I wasn't know. even referring to you. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I think that's so true because that introspection and then kind of going outside of the comfort zone, try yeah. to get broaden your, yeah, that, that's a, yeah, that's, you need to switch on that mental switch. Cause, uh, yeah. um, when I first came to KBI, I was just, yeah. I was kind of like that, the one trick po- pony. Like I it just, I could, I was young and fast, so I could just drop on it a lot of people, mm. and I kept doing it. But then, you know, there were big flaws into this in that strategy, um, yeah. and you kind of, I guess, this is why you need a good sensei. You know, Sh- yeah. Shintai really yeah. helped me step <laughs> out of it, and I, yeah. I'm more of a varied. Uh, like I have a variety of uh, you know techniques that I use now, and then that that actually yeah. adds to the uh, you know the confidence because I overcame the men- mental block and yeah. So because dropping and flopping is safe, man. Every time you right. get out gripped, you drop to your knees and go for a turn throw right. and then, Oh shoot, I missed. Now I'm in the waza. Mm-hmm. Now they're choking me. Now they're not going to throw me anymore. Right. That feels safe, you know, and it mm-hmm. becomes a crutch. Every time right. I get out gripped and I go out of bounds and sometimes I still do this, you know, Terrazzo's mm-hmm. six, four, he comes over my back and just grabs me, starts yanking on my head, kicking me in the shit. I'm like, ah, you know, I'm just going to step out of bounds. <laughs> that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, and like, that's a, that's a mental, that's a psychological thing. You know, that's like uh, protecting myself. You know, that's self-preservation yeah. right there. <laughs> it, right. In every single right. way. 
So right. it's like you rely on that too much. You, you, now all of a sudden your judo takes shape and that is formed by the mental side of things. It has nothing to do with you being able to do a soto or ipon mm-hmm. sanagi or lifting heavy weights. It has nothing to do with any of that. Mm-hmm. There's a great book called Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. Uh, mm. It's a trading in the zone by Mar- yeah, Mike yeah. Douglas. Yeah, it's like not even a. It has nothing to do with martial arts. It's about trading yeah. stocks and stuff like that, and then <laughs> you know, executing things like on a in a cold way, not a uh-huh. cold way, but like in a very methodical way, right. keeping emotions out of it. And he doesn't even talk about like technical analysis or any of that stuff or fundamentals. Right. He just talks about the psychology of trading, uh-huh. and a lot of it is that in judo too, mm-hmm. right? And if you're, let's just say, for instance, like uh, if you're a Uchimata guy and you're scared to get countered. Now, all of a sudden, you're kind of not going for it full throttle, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. There's always a thing like, ah, I'm not so, you know, confident. And, you know, I don't know. This guy might take me on my head. And, you know, so psychologically, you've already sort of beaten yourself. It has nothing right, to do right. with their ability to be able to execute the technique because you've already done this a million times. You've done the throws. You've done the nagakomi. Physically, you're always, capable. Yeah. Yeah, you're capable of doing it. You make the shapes of it when you're doing uchikomi and nagakomi. Right. You just can't throw anybody with it. Right. And then a lot of people have this question. Why doesn't this throw work for well, me? In Randori. Am I not yeah, pulling yeah. enough? Am I not yeah. doing this? Am I not doing that? It's like, no, man, you're scared. And you can't say they're scared because then, you know, some people can handle that kind right, of criticism. Right, right. right? It's like, what do you mean I'm scared? I never get scared. I feel no one. Ah! And people get like that. Right? <laughs> uh, but, it's you know, uh, we all have fears. That's natural. Right. Fear is like present in every single human. If you don't have any fear... You're really dumb, and you're gonna yeah. run into traffic. You know, like that's right. we're designed to fear things that are gonna, can potentially harm us. Right, right, right. So hesitating, and then like, oh, maybe I might get countered. Those right. things can really slow your judo down. Mm-hmm. So you have to be aware of these things, so you could overcome these things. Right, right. You know and what I mean? so that's a um, that's a good point that you brought out about also like taking criticism. That's another mental aspect of judo. Um, yeah. You said. Yeah. Some people can't, yeah, just are uh, are not as good at taking criticism as yeah. others. And constructive criticism, yeah. and you know, sometimes criticism is negative criticism, right? You know, and sometimes it's misplaced. You know, it's easy for someone to armchair quarterback and say like, right. ah, you're not pulling enough. You're not pulling it off. And you know, it's like, does this person really care about my? skill and care about me and is Mm. this person able to watch my judo and really give me good feedback or is the guy just trying to make himself feel good and try to put himself in a hierarchical position like oh yeah yeah i I know how to do this dad you just not pulling it off you know like that guy is the worst right so So it's like like taking criticism from him is different from taking criticism from someone who truly cares about you and has your best interest and really wants you and has the proper eye and skill. That's why that drives me crazy when white belts teaching other white belt stuff and coaching <laughs> other white belts. Oh, Soto, Soto, you're not pulling enough. Why, why aren't you pulling? You got to pull to sleep, man. And then you pull them aside. It's like, ye- stop that shit. Right. It's more about, it, so it's both ways, really. It's like, you got to be able to take criticism well, and you got to be able to also give constructive criticism well, too. Yeah. Like yeah. at so, appropriate yeah. times to the right people. Absolutely. And, so yeah. even if I see something in the room right. and I'm like, ah, oh, this person could benefit from this sort of feedback, mm. sometimes I won't give it because that person is not ready to hear it, doesn't want to want, right. doesn't want it, they, they can't take it or can't do anything with that information. Sometimes it's more detrimental. Mm-hmm. Dude, you, your stance is negative, right? You, you, your hips are so far back. You're attacking from too far away right. because you're scared. You know, <laughs> like people don't want to hear that. Right, right. Nobody wants to hear that. Right. I didn't want to hear that. And that's how sort of yeah, my father approached not. me. You know? Oh, uh, you, you lost because you're weak. Oh, you you fighting like you're scared out there. You know, uh. and uh, I, I hated it so much. It kind of had the, you know, it was like the negative reinforcement. It mm-hmm. works. Negative reinforcement works. It's right. not the best thing. Sometimes it breaks athletes. But for right. me, like it fueled this fire like, oh, mother, you know, right? So, yeah, negative reinforcement works to a certain level. Right. Right. Like it's not the best thing. We all know this, but like Mm -hmm. to a certain extent, like some people respond to it pretty fairly well. Right. I know people who seek it out like, hey, man, give me give me the truth. Mm. Give me the honesty. Like, just tell me I suck at this or that or what I need to work on. And, you know, people can like listen to it and take it, you know. So for me, like I I received negative reinforcement, but, you know, work to a certain extent, but it doesn't Mm -hmm. help you grow past a certain level. Right. So. Right. You know, that's my two cents on that. Right. 
So yeah. it's like, um, so it's, it's, it's going, criticism going both ways. And then now I think you kind of, we can, uh, that's a good segue into this community aspect of it. It's like, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, individuals mentality in yeah. judo, but now, you know, with criticism and whatnot, there's a communal aspect of in the yeah. mentality of judo, like uh, respecting yeah. each other and whatnot. So, yes, absolutely, man. So, you know, yeah. when you're, whenever you're talking about Eastern versus Western, you talk about collectivist right. versus individual, right? Right, Individualist. Right. And, you know, there's that famous picture, right? Like it has three fish over here and one fish in the front, right? Mm. And then you ask a Chinese person, right? <laughs> Oh, those three fish are chasing that one fish. And then you uh -huh. ask an American person, they say, oh, that fish in the front is right. leading the three fish in the back, right? Oh, it's, oh. Very, it's a perspective thing. It really right, is, right. you know? And in Japan, it's a very, very collectivist culture. Right. It's like if right. you have a cold, you wear a mask, like no questions. Right. You know what I mean? In the United States, like it's not about like, oh, I'm going to try to do my best for the corporations. Like, no, I'm getting ahead. I need that sea right. level suite. I need to get to this level of work. I need to... I need to win, right? It's about me, me, me. Mm. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing mm. wrong with that. You have to think about you and... You got to balance it out. And <laughs> you gotta, it's a balance. Like benefits. Yeah. But just culturally speaking, Asian cultures tend to be much more collectivist in nature. Right, right. In the dojo, I think that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have to want to win. And, you know, you're actually the only champion, really, right? If you win New York, New Jersey right. States like you did in 2014... You're ah. the guy that won it. I'm not on the right. podium with you. No one else is on the podium with you. You're on the podium, right, Peter? Right, right. Right? But you like kind of threw your bone there? I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. I remember that, you know? Yeah. But this is the thing. It's like, if you have a room full of people who are just selfish, right. I want to get better. I want to win. I'm here to train. Now, all of a sudden, they have zero care about the benefit or the well-being of their training right. partners. Now, all of a sudden, they start hurting them. And mm -hmm. if the only reason why they're trying to help others or doing is selfish in nature, now you kind of have a toxic environment on, on hand. Right, right, right. And that's not the best environment to learn. Mm -hmm. So exactly. having like a room full of people who are collectively like, let's make each other better. Let's make each other stronger. Right. And then you trust that the person that you're doing judo against has that intent for you. And then mm. this person has that intent for me. That person has that intent for me. Now, all of a sudden, anybody I work with is trying to make me better. Right? right. And it's safe. And I could try things. And if I go for something, if I get countered, people aren't pointing their fingers like, ha, ha, ha. And then you don't have the guy running over like, you didn't pull the sleeve enough. Right? Like, that's a toxic environment. Right. So this mass psychology really, really is important in this field as well. Right? And when you're right. doing judo. And that's something that you see and you don't see. You know, somebody mm -hmm. walks into a dojo, they feel that vibe, right? But a lot of the times they're looking at, like, what technique? What is the sensei showing? What, what is this guy's right, right. Like, yeah, how is this guy doing his thing? And can I beat that guy? You know, people are so wrapped up in that focus. That's what you should be really looking at, right? Mm -hmm. The collectivist psychology of the room is a, a very learning-oriented growth mindset, like a warm right. community that I kind of want to send my kids into that world? Or is it like a cutthroat everyone all men you know by themselves like kill the carrier sort of a feel right so it's because you know I mean? even if yeah like if even if even when a champion goes on the po podium you have to remind that of course the champion has done the work and then he, he or yeah, she was trying yeah. to be better but at the same time there was a team behind the whole yeah, yeah. village so to speak yeah that's man i can't even stress that enough like yeah. it takes so much to send an athlete to the championships right Right. You know, it's not just about training is, either, right? Yeah. It's just about training, man. And it is a little bit about training, but it's like, you know, it's my training partners. I need good training partners. I need every mm. Rondori and every Rondori that I do, I need another human being to do it with. Right. Right? And exactly. then when you have, it should be me. It's got to be right. me. You know, <laughs> it's okay. Some people are wired that way. Right. You know, that's fine. I'm not saying don't do that. You know, there was a long time in my life where i was like that uh -huh. it's like just me 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 you know but i think as a coach you kind of have to sort of shift your mindset a little bit and understand some of these things and then adapt yeah you know? now i know a little bit better so right <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's a wise man now shintaro uh, I, um, you know, maybe <laughs> so then all I'm of these fool. things yeah. all of these things uh you know the confidence the 
the grit that opt by uh, overcoming adversities and you know mm. this taking giving and taking criticism well and then this yeah. uh, you know team oriented mindset all of these things can be transferred into your day-to-day -day life um, can be man yeah and you yeah. Go train this you could train all, every single right. one of these skills if you do it mindfully and under a good guidance you could train every single one of these skills right. there's a girl right now in the dojo who's too shy she right. always gets left out like mm -hmm. not left out but like if there's an odd number of people in the room she like stands back in the right corner. right no one wants to work out with her she's brand mm -hmm. new no one wants to teach mm -hmm. her osoto you know they mm -hmm. want to learn do their tayo do their sode do this do that you know yeah. uh, even the white belts want to work with the higher belts and then some people are aggressive about it hey you know uh johnny like can you work out with me stand on the sideline hey listen you know, lady, like you got to go out there and get your partner. You got to be proactive. Right. Take the initiative. Right. You know, you're new in the room. You know, I understand like you're shy, but go out there and, you know, say hi. Hi, my name mm -hmm. is, you know, Sally. That's a fake name. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, like, uh, can you work out with me? And then, you know, sometimes people need the crutch of like for me to say, hey, Adam, can you work out with Sally? Right, right. And Adam's so nice. He's probably listening. Yeah. Right now. Like, yeah of course and then you know he doesn't have to stick with that person right right because i i always form these partnerships in three four minute chunks always because mm -hmm. i don't want anyone to feel stuck with somebody or like oh i'm stuck training right but adam works with this woman and then stays with that woman for the rest of the class until the rondori class of course right right so he's a great dude to have in the room but like not just for that reason but he's a great room period guy period but like that woman can gain a lot out of that Right. Taking the initiative, ask him for something. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes yeah. you see things like, uh, and you have to be clear and concise with your communication, right? Right. Sometimes somebody wants to work out with you. You feel like that person isn't safe. Mm -hmm. No, thanks. Right. I, have, I already have a partner. I'm sorry. So all, all That's yeah. a, such a good example because it kind of pulls in everything. The confidence uh, that she needs to work on herself. But at the same time, a sensei mm. has to give her the right criticism like constructive yeah. like encouragement and criticism and yeah also, i wouldn't even say criticism on that one. yeah I it's like it's like, yeah. encouragement yeah. and then the room the whole community has to be supportive yep for her to grow mm. for uh, a safe place to grow so that she can you know work on that mental yeah muscle and then she has to be introspective enough to Re yeah. recognize it and then try to step out yeah. of the comfort zone so all of these Here's things another to, uh, example yeah. you know how we do the forward rolls down the middle yeah yeah and we do them in rank yeah. order so the black belts are flying boom right. boom <laughs> drama, boom boom <laughs> fly and fly and fly right. get to the white belts and someone new and they're like oh i've never done this before right. like what i do and then they're doing this thing and everyone's watching and they feel a little bit you know right. funny and that's a great time to see like what their profile is like Mm, mm. the psychological profile is like and then you could base the type of feedback you give based on that right right sometimes i'll say something like you've heard me say this like don't worry no one's watching <laughs> but everyone is watching yeah so like it's a funny. little joke too yeah yeah and then if they laugh they're like ha 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 okay clearly that's not a joke directed at to to make fun of that person right right but it's like ah it's just funny everyone no right. one's watching right and uh -huh. then they do the role and now they laughed it off and now they built something there mentally mm. Oh, right. I, I, I didn't want to get in front and do this role in front of everyone. I did it since I made a funny joke. Everyone laughed and then they weren't laughing at me. But if mm. there's a person who's very sensitive, to that kind of thing, right? Oh, is there, are they laughing at me? I would make that joke. Right, right. I'd be like, you're doing great. You're doing great. Just do one more and you're good. Mm -hmm. Right. And then they're like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. Just give me one. Do it from mm. your knees. Go ahead. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And then sometimes they need the help. I run over, you know, I grab the collar yeah. and they're like, roll, roll, go. Yeah, yeah go. Okay. You know, because fluency is a lot more important in that person right and some people just need to hear like oh you're you're better than most people who begin mm -hmm. you're better than most beginners hey dude i'm pretty good right for a guy who's only done it for four times uh -huh. it's like yeah you are yeah get over yeah. that. get over <laughs> that you know thing that you hold that he's holding on to that thing right 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 and i've always kind of held on to some of that too anytime i tried a new sport i'm like i'm pretty good right for like i've been to judo my whole life guy, i should yeah. be pretty good at this yeah. right i mean you're good at judo you're good at everything you know, and uh, I had a sense of pride there and that kind of stuff inhibits growth too, right? Mm -hmm. And it all contributes to the emotional intelligence. Right, right. Of the individual. Mm -hmm. And judo progressively builds that if it's the right community. Mm -hmm. Through that breakfall, through that forward roll situation, right? Mm -hmm. Through like proactively asking someone, 
through refusing rounds and saying, no, I already have some on all oh, my knee hurts already. My knee hurts. So I'm not really going with anyone that's bigger than me, you know, doing it in a way. Right. And mm-hmm. understanding like there is a natural hierarchy with the belt system. Right. Right. I saw a white belt ask a brown belt. Hey, you want to work out with me? Mm-hmm. And Luca was just like, no. Oh, my God. Luca. <laughs> I go with George next. And I'm just like, that. you know, like you got to. You know, and I didn't say anything because it's like, it's Luca too. I have a soft spot for him. Yeah. He's like, has the, you know, the, all the dude was, uh, you know, he's just like, uh, he's not going to get hurt. By right, that, right. Right. But like, that's like a type of interaction uh-huh. that could little by little, that could like, you know, it plants that seed. You know what I mean? It's like the cut. Yeah. Like that. You got to try to sniff yeah. that out like uh, before yeah. it. It happens two, two yeah. or three times more. Like I might have to look, be like, look, listen, man, when you're refusing yeah. rounds, I know you're here to train and all this stuff, but you got to, hey, next right. round. Hey, I already have <laughs> someone next. Hey, maybe in like a couple more. Yeah. You know? There's a way to say, you know, there's a way. Refuse there's a method. It, yeah. Yeah. And judo is great for this because if you're at a good school, everything is quick and concise. Everything's on a pace. It's like sort of this right. organized chaos is boom, 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 one mm. thing after another. And you need to be able to, quickly and concisely relay these messages in a way that's not gonna right yeah a, and a, a good judo dojo could be mm. a like a practice ground almost like you know how you do you know uh uchikomis before you yeah. go into the randori because you want to build practice yeah. all these moves in a safe space before going into the chaos and then you do a lot of randori before you go into competitions in the same way that you can you know, practice all these uh, mental muscles, uh, build yeah. up your mental muscles in a safe space, like a good judo dojo, yeah. and you can apply to the real world. Yeah. yeah. And then and when then, in the real life do you ever collaborate with someone or have a mm-hmm. conflict with someone, mm-hmm. arm's length, face to face? When do right. you ever do that? That's right. a very uncomfortable thing. Right. All right. You grab the lapel and you grab the sleeve. I do the same thing. Right versus right. You could be right versus left. But mm-hmm. hey, you know, like we're right here. You can smell right. my breath. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like quite this, literally. You go <laughs> Sotogari, when you go Sotogari, you're going to put your head right here. And, you know, mm. maybe you've never, you don't, you're not a touchy person. Maybe you've never been hugged as a kid. I don't even know. <laughs> right. But we're going to be right here face right. to face. We're going to work on this thing together. Right. And then you can immediately feel like the tension in their body, you know, whether they want to do it, whether they don't want to do it, whether if I'm showing something, they're already resisting. Right. Or they're just completely loose and limp. Uh-huh. Right? Like you just feel a lot of these things because uh-huh. it's so personal. Right, right. Right. Like you're at this distance where it's just like, when are you ever in that distance? Right. And when you do know, you ever wh- get that feeling? You, you don't even do that with your wife these days. You know, like <laughs> even in that like face to face for the first right. time. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not trying to make it, you know, right. Like when do you face each other like this? Right. And then, it's very hey, rare. We're yeah. going to work on something together. Me and you, right? <laughs> right here. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, even me, it's like always like, yeah, yeah, you know, like we're sitting next to each other, phone, you know. Phones, yeah. It's too easy to do that. You know, way, right? it's like it makes things easier even in real life because you're going through this like weird exercise that's yeah. called judo. Yeah. Yeah, and it's still kind of so, like, you know, sometimes it's, uh, you know, I have my certain psychological things that I got to push through and work on too. You know what I right. mean? It's like preventing myself from getting sensei syndrome is a big one mm-hmm. yeah you, know what I mean? you, to- you told me about that a little yeah, yeah. what is a it's sensei like a, syndrome no it's just like when you get gassed up and you become like oh man, <laughs> like you know the, <laughs> the, king, the stopping grounds but then right. it's just like the aberration is a little bit different right when you're sensei mm-hmm. right you know, right and people make what it is of it and some people treat you know their sensei like a service thing you know, I, I pay for your service right right you. you know of course i nip that kind of you know Mm-hmm. thing right away <laughs> but like when you're talking to someone and you're teaching them and they're absolutely interested in what you're saying mm-hmm. and they want your skill and they admire you and they're like wow you know like right right it's right. amazing anything you say is so cool like oh, you're the best <laughs> you're so strong you're i oh, yeah. and then like you, you get too many of those you can really get to your head right right you know and you start like some people venerate even like almost venerate their teachers the sense yeah, yeah 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 so like that's like a sort of a thing and then you know it's easy to i like this term armchair quarterback you know i'm right, quarterback right. and you're like oh, you know there's a you know and you got to nip that in the bud and you yeah know, when you're the guy that has all the answers in the room all of a sudden you can fool yourself into thinking you know everything right 
even though I frequently say I do know everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you? How are you working on that? Like what? What are? Yeah, what I'm not really things? working on it. You know? <laughs> Just like aware of it. Just right. the awareness and being mindful of it is important. Yeah, I think it, that's a. Uh, that's yeah. actually, you know, half the battle, really. More than really half, the, half battle. the battle. It really is half the battle. Because you could kind of like, little by little, get taken on this path. And before you know it. Right. Right. I have knockout powers without touching anybody. I have uh, no touch oh knockout God. powers. And you have a, <laughs> you know, a group of people in the room that's willing to take falls for you. And you're like, mm -hmm. all right. You know what? And you, you end up on YouTube because you challenge the YouTube, MMA yeah. guy. I'm telling you, man, I, I've known guys in the room like uh, that I like sort of been training with and my dad would be like right, let me show you guys this throw right and my dad would put their hand on the gi and the guy would be like oh <laughs> and my dad's like what are you freaking doing <laughs> he's like i just felt my energy leave my body my dad's like that's not a thing man stop doing that <laughs> yeah. like can you imagine like year after year after year you're like in uh, a basement teaching martial art to like 50 dedicated students and mm -hmm. they're all doing that like, we, I can see could, how some yeah. of these guys can all of a sudden be like, oh, right. I do have magical powers in my hands. Like, right. Every time I grab this person's wrist, he, he goes limp. Ah, uh, you know? gosh. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, uh, you know, psychology, all that's kind of related to confident. like staying. Uh, it's kind of related to staying humble all, all the time. Staying like humble, you're, yeah. There's always more to learn, even if even though even if you're a sensei with the dojo with a lot of students. Yeah. 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 Oh, I think that's what you know. I I could say one thing you're doing right now, you know, to combat that kind of sensei syndrome that you speak mm. of is uh, you have your own sensei. You like you train with Brian Glick. Yeah, I have a lot of sensei, you know? man. My yeah. dad's my sensei too. Exactly. You know? I don't li I don't listen to him. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's you have a, a mental lot of sensei. block too, man. I I can't. Uh, it's hard for me to. I gotta say, it's hard for me to learn from <laughs> my father. It, it's your, it's your old pops, you know? You're doing tile <laughs> like this. I'm like, that's, I'm, uh, I don't know about that, that pops. Right. <laughs> yeah. You got to anyway. lift heavier weights. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, <laughs> you have to watch film. You just got your ass kicked. You got to watch film. It's like, I'm not watching that. Dad. I, uh, I don't want to watch that. Right. <laughs> Mental block right there. Mental block, you know? But yeah, so no, that, I do have my own sensei, Brian. He's been teaching me stuff, yeah. jujitsu stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'm trying to, Right, be as uh, spongy as possible, you know. Right, open to all. Really trying to ask the right questions. Right, I think that's uh, you know, talking about sensei. We already had a uh, a episode about that, but it, the mentality is that, you know, you could learn from anyone. Like the, everyone could yeah. be your sensei. Like yeah. even if a white belt that walks into your dojo could be very <laughs> like a so to speak a black belt in some other areas like finance or something or computer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, can always. Man, he said something learn. too that re really reminded me of something that you know I don't really like uh, something that I already knew, but like something that I you know I needed that reminder. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been kind of working on like this body lock passing situation, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like floating pass body lock floating pass body lock like kind of going back and forth and you know mm. i've been trying to like adapt it to my frame and things like this right. but it's like i'm kind of having not a hard time but like i can't mm. you know do it consistently on good people mm -hmm. right and i was like talking about it i was like yeah man these are the resistance i get sometimes whatever and then he's like you gotta understand like you know when you try a new thing like your entire game kind of drops down too because you're trying to funnel everything to try those things like right, normally right. You do all these other things, and now you're not doing those things, right? I, I can do all these other things, but now I'm not doing those things. Mm -hmm. and you're just kind of trying to focus here, and that skill hasn't really been refined yet, so you're going to open yourself up to certain counters and certain things. It's just like judo, right? Mm, yeah. You're working on tomonage, point. you're going to yeah. look dumb because you're just going to keep dropping to your back, and it's not right. going to work. You right. Know? I know guys that have been working on tomonage for eight years and frustrated people for eight years. Now they're <laughs> throwing them. <laughs> Took him a right. long time, right? And then yeah. I, I kind of needed that reminder, like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that's right, that's right, you know? Right. Your whole game has to kind of come down because now I'm trying to build my game around that and then develop that piece of the puzzle. Right. Right, and I needed that reminder because I was kind of, like, getting down to myself, like, man, Georgie's, uh, you know, leg locked me the other day. And... <laughs> oh, he leg locked you. <laughs> he leg locked me, yeah. I mean, oh, it had man. nothing to do with the the pass that I was working at, but I found myself trying to get into this one position to like force right. this one thing, and then like that 
led me to like make mistakes. Mm-hmm. And then that mistake led to me scrambling, trying to add of something. And then he got me in like lock. And I was like, yeah, that level of, know, we were of in introspection. Gee, is, so yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> he was get, he heel hooked me when we were in gi pants. And then like, uh, you're not supposed to heel hook when you're wearing gi pants. You know? Right. Like, <laughs> That's not allowed in judo. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like doing a little, you know, yeah. like, uh, but yeah, it's one of those things, you know? Right. Yeah, I think it's it, that's a good point because I'm also like I, you know, since I moved to Michigan, I've been like dojo hopping and I went to a BJJ gym, very good. But mm-hmm. I realized that, you know, how like the whole like you said, I sensed that my whole game was kind of coming down because I'm trying to work on my nevaza more at a BJJ yeah. school. And yeah. it's it's I I was getting a little discouraged but then you know i try to like keep telling myself no like you're trying to build up a yeah different sport and then different aspect and you know so i i gotta keep telling myself this is kind of uh, introspection and resiliency yeah that's another thing yeah don't get frustrated get fascinated that's what martin rooney used to always say that to me martin rooney was my like strength and conditioning coach for years he was a mentor of mine you know he had me training in his gym from like, you know, right. in my formative years of like late teens and early twenties. And he used to always say that, don't get frustrated. Get fascinated. I think that's a great saying. Don't get frustrated. Yeah. Be fascinated. Yeah. And every yeah. time I get started getting frustrated, I'm like, man, why am I getting frustrated? Like I should be interested in this. And then mm-hmm. right. And I would look right. for what makes it fascinating. Right. Yeah. Right. I think, I think that's a, uh, that's yeah. a good uh, way to end this episode. You know, that yep. saying, you know, take guys, the emotion out of the trade. Yeah. Don't right. get frustrated. Be fascinated. Get fascinated. Yep. Yeah. So that's the mentality of judo, I guess. Psychology of judo. Yeah. Could have probably talked a lot more about, you know, the competitive side of stuff because everyone talks about that. Right. You know, my right. will versus your will breaking the opponent. And that right. has a very wrestling heavy feel mm-hmm. to it. But I think we did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah cool all right anything else before we end nope thank you guys cool. everybody reaching out and giving suggestions i think this yeah. podcast is really picking up yeah um please suggest it to your friends and i like how people are reaching out to peter now reach out to him yeah <laughs> yeah Bother guys him. If, yeah ask if him you guys have any idea <laughs> <laughs> yeah like like we mentioned in the beginning of the episode this episode the idea of this episode was suggested by one of you uh so we we always we're always open to suggestions so please reach out to us and please stay tuned for the next episode